A research facility attempts to use acts of love to activate the protein that they're studying. To impress her professor, a young scientist offers her body to science in more ways than one. At Quinyard Laboratories, Philippe accepts a metal box delivered by a UPS man. Another researcher, Nadine, taps the box and then utters an animalistic call, which the creature inside mimics as if replying to her. In another part of the lab, Christophine is organizing IV bags while listening to the answering machine where Professor Frederick gave her instructions of what to prepare. The woman even mouths his words, clearly enjoying the sound of his voice. In the exam room, Nadine opens the box revealing a penguin chick. Philippe notices that their tranquilizer gun is empty, so his colleague instructs him to instruct the new PhD student to get more. However, neither of them can remember her name, so Philippe calls out different names on the intercom that rhyme with Christophine to get her attention. Quickly, she delivers the darts, and then they sedate the penguin which collapses like a ragdoll. They inspect the penguin's health, and Philippe tells Christophine to think of a name for it, so she names it Gaston. Once done, the man instructs the ladies to take the animal upstairs, and when Nadine questions why he can't do it, Philippe hints that he doesn't want his jewels frozen. With that, Nadine takes the student and the penguin to a secured elevator leading to the main lab. There, Christophine's heart skips when she passes by Frederick's office. She is then told to enter the ice field, where the lab keeps their specimens while Nadine will guide her from the control room. Upon opening the door, a simulated blizzard rages inside, leading Christophine to get lost. Nadine scrambles to turn the blizzard off, and after she does, Christophine finds herself in the middle of the penguin enclosure. After admiring the animals, she sets down Gaston to join the rest. However, the penguin chick collapses. Panicked, Christophine gives it CPR, which Nadine finds odd. Someone joins the other woman from the control room to watch the student revive the creature, and after after a few tense moments, Gaston comes back to life. After leaving the ice field, a shaking Christophine finds herself comforted by Professor Frederick Quinier. He informs her that she's suffering from hypothermia, so he gets close to her to mitigate it. He gently wraps his arms around her, and the student enjoys the moment before the professor violently shakes her to improve her blood flow. After grappling his student to the floor to help her body warm up, Frederick praises her actions, so he's chosen her to assist him closely with the project. Some time later, the two walk down the hall, though the professor also can't remember what her name is, so he keeps calling her different names that rhyme with Christophine. He quizzes her on what PPM is, and she answers that it's a unique penguin protein that fights diseases, impressing the professor. Inside a mice storage room, Frederick requests low antibody mice from Siegfried to test PPM on. Before they leave, Siegfried asks Christophine out to watch a movie, but she shyly rejects him. In a meeting room, the professor addresses the section chiefs, announcing that their American rival is already already allowing them human testing by next month. If they want to keep their lab open, they have to produce results and theories and convince the Board of Ethics to approve human testing of PPM. However, when he asks them to raise any ideas or reports, the others start speaking amongst themselves, clearly unprepared to impress their boss. Because of this, Frederick continues his research late into the night, though this seems to lead to nothing. One morning, Frederick reports to the Board of Ethics that PPM only works on penguin genes. With this in mind, they inject the penguin genome on lab mice, and with the right stimulus, it worked. He promises that they're close to universal immunity. Curious, the board asks what the stimulus is, but Frederick lies about saboteurs stealing his lab data. In truth, however, he's the one who broke his own computer. He uses this excuse to keep his data a secret until everything is ready to ensure that his rivals won't use their studies against them. With this in mind, he asks the board to return in a month, though he's only granted three weeks instead. After this, Christophine goes to feed the penguins in the ice field and sees Frederick brooding amongst the animals. When she exits, her colleagues scold her, saying that the professor needs space. Philippe worries about the board closing their research while Nadine worries that they already destroyed Frederick's dream. Hearing this makes Christophine contemplate on how she can help the scientist that she looks up to. When she comes to a decision, she enters the ice field and calls out to Frederick, telling him that she has trapped herself inside so he has to save her. She then declares that she accepts the sacrifice for the sake of science. With that, that, she injects herself with a penguin genome and PPM. She announces that she knows what's at risk, so she'll start working from inside the ice field and keep everything a secret. Just then, she collapses. When she comes to, she finds herself inside a fiberglass box while Frederick watches over her. He's heard her declaration and commitment, so he accepts her sacrifice at being his confidential test subject. 
He thanks her for her risky move, though he still calls her by the wrong name. The next morning, Frederick tells Nadine and Philippe to continue the research on their own accord while he'll do his own. Philippe mentions that a PPM vial is missing, so Frederick claims that it was his fault. This makes Nadine suspect that something crazy happened, so she hugs him worriedly, praying that he didn't risk himself. Their professor assures them that he just threw a bottle out of anger, but he's calm now. Meanwhile, Christophine can't seem to input the correct passcode to the secured elevator. Thankfully, her colleagues soon exit the elevator and give her the new code. Nadine and Philippe then meet with the project members to announce that everyone will each get six mice to experiment with. Siegfried gets antsy because he's attached to the mice he raised, but this is the scientists' way to push their research forward, turning it into a competition. Upstairs, Frederick briefs his student on how he plans to find the PPM stimulus. Since she's the subject and he's the researcher, he asserts the importance of working together, which inspires her. To begin testing, Frederick examines Christophine's body, meticulously taking pictures and measurements before taking a blood sample. Despite Despite the rigors, the lady enjoys the attention until he asks for urine and stool samples. When she returns with the samples, Frederick admits that he was tough on her, but she says she had fun. Confident, the professor then gives her a folder with his plan to find the stimulus. It contains a strict meal plan, questionnaires, and his number as he insists that she live a perfect lifestyle. The research continues the next day with Christophine injuring slaps and electrocutions. More samples are taken from her, and Frederick confirms that her system accepted the PPA. He changes her diet to match a penguin's and dunks her in ice water for 20 minutes, hoping to find the stimulus. Later, he massages her to counteract the hypothermia while ranting about his American rival. Christophine wakes up after and sees Frederick preparing to leave. She asks if she can go out with him, but he has dinner plans. This disappoints her, so she makes her way out weeping. Just then, she finds Siegfried mournfully commemorating his mice on a cork board. He laments that more mice will be placed in ice water in the next experiment. Out of nowhere, he remarks that making Making love lowers heart attack risks, indirectly proposing it. Christophine rejects him at first, but ultimately, they get intimate while mice cages rattle against their activities. The next morning, Frederick studies her blood under a microscope and tells her that the PPM is activated in her system. He requests her to disclose everything she did that night, so Christophine hesitantly admits that she slept with Siegfried. He coldly continues to ask details like quality and duration, concluding that doing it generates hormones that activate the PPM. With that, he calls everyone for a meeting later. He then stabs her skin with a syringe of influenza virus, and it doesn't produce any bleeding or cuts. He checks the microscope and tells her influenza doesn't affect her either, proving that the PPM has turned her body immune to illness and minor injuries. After sharing this development with everyone, the others applaud Frederick. Philippe asks how he did it, and he vaguely says he worked with mice, so he thanks Siegfried and orders everyone to make the mice copulate. Philippe and Nadine inspect everyone's mice and frown when they hear news about their American rivals making more progress. The next day, Frederick is alarmed to discover that the PPM is no longer active in Christophine's body. She speculates that repeated stimulus would work, so he suggests she make love to Siegfried again. She refuses, saying that Siegfried is unable to keep secrets. She suggests that it has to be someone who's discreet, with great stamina and works in the lab so it doesn't look suspicious. She then directly tells him that he should do it for science, and he agrees. They shake on it, asserting that they're doing it for science. That night, Frederick drinks some enhancement pills and approaches the expected Christophine. After the deed, the professor Professor sighs disappointingly. Their intimate time didn't activate her PPM, so she suggests doing it again. Frederick argues that she only did it with Siegfried once, so he presses her for more details about time with him. The next day, she presents printouts of the position she did with Siegfried. He's astounded by both the number and complexity, and soon, they practice each position awkwardly. Frederick struggles to perfect them and both get hurt in the process. In the other lab, the two main researchers and Siegfried dejectedly look at their unproductive mice. Philippe thought mice mate all the time, but Siegfried explains that they have strict schedules, so Nadine suggests spraying them with pheromones. The three spray everyone's mice with pheromones until Nadine gets dizzy and giggly with the fumes. As Christophine leaves the facility, she notices the receptionist eye her amorously. Everyone else in her path seems to be in the same mood. The procedure successfully gets the mice in the mood, though Nadine and Philippe end up flirting too. Soon, Siegfried approaches Frederick to ask what to do with the newborn mice. He dismisses him and keeps walking. Walking, only to stop when he hears moaning in one of the comfort rooms. He knocks and Philippe comes out with an awkward smile. The professor pointedly asks him if he succeeded in isolating the stimulus and he confirms that they're close. Frederick reminds him that the board meeting is in two days. Nadine comes out 
the same door. So the professor asks what they think of Siegfried physically. Nadine says he's exciting, much to Philippe's dismay. At his lab later, Frederick and his student had done the deed multiple times with no success. Desperate, he approaches Christophine slowly and kisses her, leading to a much more heated intimacy. The next morning, he finds Christophine still asleep due to the rigors of their night, which was colored with affection instead of cold science. She apologizes for falling asleep, but he lets her rest, saying that they have all day to do it until the board meeting tomorrow. That evening, Christophine wakes up dizzy and uncomfortable. She looks at the mirror and sees that her eyes have turned black. When she gasps, Frederick hears her from the ice field, so he asks how she is. She composes herself and tells him something's wrong, but the professor assumes she's speaking about the lack of results. He resigns to that fact and says he'll inform the team tomorrow. He then realizes that his student is trying to say something, but when he asks, she bids him good night instead. As Christophine makes her way out, Nadine spots her weeping. The researcher has speculated about the student's feelings toward the professor, so she soothes the weeping girl who keeps looking down to avoid her eyes. Nadine confides that she also had passionate feelings for a person she had to be platonic to, so she advises Christophine to be patient and say what the other person wants to hear. Just as Christophine leaves, Nadine and Philippe check on a pair of mating mice and at the presumed peak, they take a blood sample and quickly check the results. This provides them stunning results. The next morning, Frederick addresses the entire team preparing to give them bad news. However, Philippe and Nadine storm in to confirm that PPM was activated by reaching peak satisfaction, surprising the professor. They compare methods, and it's the same. So Philippe jokes that the professor's male mice weren't good, not knowing it's Frederick himself who performed to get results. The professor quietly concludes their success, and everyone cheers, ready to face the board. Back in his lab, Frederick repeatedly tries to call Christophine but only gets voicemail, making him worry. Later, they announce the results to the board where the professor is given a standing ovation. News of his scientific miracle eventually reaches newspapers and scientific magazine circulations, and all they need to figure out is how to make PPM's effect permanent. Sometime later, Frederic, Philippe, and Nadine watch over the penguins in the ice field. Nadine discreetly tells the professor that Christophine's doctor sent a two-week sick leave notice. She says she feels something between him and Christophine, worried that something bad happened. Frederick just assures her that his student will return. In truth, he also worries for Christophine so he keeps contacting her, but to no avail. Meanwhile, the woman wakes to see her toes are now webbed. She looks down in surprise, trying to understand the sudden transformation. Later, the scientists discover the PPM-activated mice transform overnight. Their paws become webbed and their body temperature rises, so they need to be kept on ice. Upon seeing this, the professor leaves abruptly, worried about his student. Frederick arrives at her apartment and walks in, having gotten the keys from Christophine's landlord. He finds the place dark and the floor is wet. Soon, he discovers Christophine submerged in a bathtub full of ice. Before he speaks, she asks him to get more ice from the fridge. Frederick inspects her hand to find it webbed and notices that her skin is decomposing because of the heat. He insists on bringing her to the Arctic lab to find a solution, but she refuses, saying she's not his guinea pig anymore. She insists on not doing further tests or being shown to others, so the man sneaks her back inside the building and lays her down the ice field. There, Christophine's pallor starts to return to normal. Frederick currently experiments on the mice to find a way to stop her transformation. While checking on Christophine, he finds frost on her arm and sees her weakening. Despite this, the professor assures her that he is making progress. After a while, he finds a picture of his student during the first test and feels regret, seeing how different she is now. Making matters worse, Nadine calls him to report that two of their mice have died. He visits Christophine again, asking how she is. She says she's well, but the professor discloses that she's dying and he doesn't know what to do. With an idea in mind, she asks him to bring her to Antarctica. Considering this, Frederick goes to Philippe and Nadine and informs them that he'll go to the Antarctic base to bring their space probe. He claims that he needs to bring it personally since the probe is fragile. Soon enough, he delivers Christophine through a box in the middle of the night and places her inside a climate-controlled capsule. Before they leave, she tells him she needs to go alone. The professor wants to go with her, but she insists that she needs to be alone. Brokenhearted, they part part ways and Frederick watches the truck containing Christophine leave. Guilty and mournful, the professor goes to Christophine's previous office and listens to a recording of his voice on her answering machine. He then flips over his meticulous notes with Christophine's photo attached, furthering his guilt over the sacrifice she made for his research. Unwilling to let the woman go through this alone, Frederick soon takes a deep breath and injects himself 
with a PPM. Eventually, Frederick wanders the icy lands of Antarctica, surrounded by penguins. As he turns around, he sees Christophine, who has turned into a penguin-like humanoid. He then shows his webbed hands to her, and she smiles, knowing what he did to join her in this life. With that, the professor goes to her and Christophine embraces him. Sometime later, Frederick's team gets the Nobel Prize of Science for their research on boosting human immunity. Everyone stands in applause, with one of them showing webbed fingers, implying that the group eventually found a way to make it stable and share their results with the world. As the world of humans seemed to be on a path to change, Christophine and Frederick glide happily in the Arctic waters together. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.